Hi, this is uh, Wayne Quackenbush, and I guess you'd call this a special sideshow version of Art Matters. Uh, we're at the Annex in Newport, Rhode Island, uh, where I have a gallery and comic book store, and I've been showing local artists for about the last 10 years or, show, or so. And um, we're getting ready to decorate for Halloween. So I have Holly Ferreira here. She's an artist and a dancer and a henna artist. Mm -hmm. um, she'll explain what that is mm -hmm. in case you don't know. Mm -hmm. And Holly and I have known each other for at least five years. Yeah, around there. And we've worked together on different shows in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. uh, pop-up shows where we market artwork and Holly and her troupe perform, mm -hmm. and uh, she's brought down some work today that will be the focus and center point of the window for the Annex for the month of October 2018. So we were talking earlier about what Halloween means mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. and being of a certain age and yeah. growing up at a time <laughs> before I remember a time when there were no VCRs and mm -hmm. and uh, you had to wait for things to come on television and Halloween yep. was always special because you could watch movies that you couldn't normally see any other time of year. That's so right. you want to talk a little bit about that to start off? Sure. Um, there's an appreciation for once a year. That's when you got to see things yes. once a year. So you behaved really well because <laughs> that was taken away from you. But um, one of the movies we were talking about was Charlie Brown. And um, we waited for the that great pumpkin every Charlie year. Charlie Brown, yes. And I loved that Because they that showed movie. it once a year. Once a year. Yes. That's all you got. Mm -hmm. And then there was a movie, and I can't remember who was in it, but it had like a little bat on string. And it was like teeny tiny bat, and he would turn into a bat. But I loved that movie. Oh, you know what? Was that so was campy. probably one of the Mexican vampire movies. Maybe. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> Slaughter of the Vampires or one of those Maybe. good things. Maybe. I don't know what it, the name was, but I loved that movie. And it was so campy. And yes. But you didn't know that because at the time. Because they dressed for the opera. All the vampires dressed like they right. were going out on the town. But you didn't know that yes, at the time. Exactly. You just appreciated it. Yes. For what it was. Now, I was so desperate for Halloween back then that mm -hmm. I count... To Kill a Mockingbird mm -hmm. as a Halloween movie. Yeah. Just for the one scene at the end, mm -hmm. which I will not reveal, mm -hmm. but if you watch the <laughs> whole movie, you'll get maybe five minutes of Halloween. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all you could get. And then, of course, there were the Universal horror movies. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, all those things were. And again, I was young, so I didn't really realize why I was attracted to it at the time. You know, but you but just, I just tied loved it into trick-or-treating. Yeah, I mean, I love trick-or-treating, of course, but I always loved the weird. I always loved obscure things, and when you're small, you don't really understand why it's as obscure. You just know you like it, and something draws you into it. Well, I mean, I thought a little bit about that, and mm -hmm. I think that the beauty of it was that you could be alone in a room mm -hmm. with the television, mm -hmm. and the most horrible things could be happening, and mm -hmm. they would stimulate your imagination, mm -hmm. but you also knew that you were safe yes. in your house, Yes. and so mm -hmm. there was that mix of warmth and repulsion right. Right. at the same time that right. just made you tingly. Yeah. No, I lo I always loved it and not knowing anything really about it. I mean, that was like the first time I saw Ziggy Stardust. He was in a, one of my uncles had this book on all different musicians and I think I was seven or eight and I would look at his picture and he scared me, but yet it was that same <laughs> feeling like he scared me, but there was something about him. Well, that that's I just a whole loved. other dimension because yeah. there's a whole gender playing fluidity mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. there, and mm -hmm. and uh, being outrageous, mm -hmm. and and once you heard the music, that must have blown you away. Yeah, and I didn't really know who he was at all yeah. until later. But I don't know. I just always loved strange things, weird things, dark stuff, and Halloween is always that time of the year where. I could be 
and not be and, bothered and, just, and bullied and whatnot. And it kind of runs in your family too because mm -hmm. Brian, your husband, is, yeah. oh my God, he's like <laughs> crazy. Every time he comes here, he's like, show me some DVD I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. and, and, and your son and your daughter just mm -hmm. seem to be- We're like the Adams too. family in I real just life. said that to in my- In real life. <laughs> <laughs> to my assistant behind the camera. They're mm -hmm. like the Adams family, they are. which is, you know, yeah. I just, that's great. That's, yeah. yeah. It's fun and it's uh, out there. You know, it makes mm -hmm. your brain bigger because you realize mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this is a tradition. The holiday has come, is hundreds, if not thousands, of years old. Mm -hmm. It used to be mm -hmm. the ancient beginning of the new year, yeah. it was the harvest mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You got to respect, respectfully mm -hmm. be close to your dead ancestors. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. um, and cemeteries are fabulous, though. Yes. Like, very peaceful. Yes. And and very... Of course, I worked in a cemetery when I was 16. Did you? That changed my life, too. Did you? I did. Doing? <laughs> I was a caretaker and... That's amazing! <laughs> and I also got to, to, well, you know, not to go too much into it, but I got to fill in the graves and all of that good stuff, yeah. Um, you lived a great life, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best is yet to come. Right, yeah. But you have a lot of great experiences. So you want to talk about the henna? Okay, so henna. Because you, I'm, I... I knew about henna. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a girlfriend in the 80s that used to mm -hmm. get henna done, and um, yeah. you are very patient and astute at it. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, <laughs> you don't have any pictures today, but you can describe it. Okay, so henna, I'll, I'll say what henna is traditionally. Um, it's usually done at Indian weddings, that's where you usually see it. You see a lot in Bollywood movies, it's become popular through that. And festivals throughout the spring and summer. And henna is just a natural plant that we mix with lemon juice and oil, and it stains your skin, and it goes away. It lasts for one to three weeks, but it's to ad adorn yourselves and whatnot. But, say in North Africa, Morocco, mm -hmm. they do it more for protection, which is why I like doing it. I look at it as a sacred connection between people, a healing. I just did a henna crown for somebody last week and it was a beautiful experience, you know, so that's why I do henna. Oh, I think I saw the pictures of the... Yeah, woman. that was an yeah. amazing mm -hmm. experience, you know. So and if you can make somebody feel loved for that amount of time. Yes, you know. absolutely. Yeah. So that's henna. And your dance troupe is very active? Yeah, Holly and the Sacred Flames. We dance all around New England. Uh, we're a fusion dance troupe, ballet dance troupe, so we do all styles of dance. But I've been dancing for 16 years now. And um, we got to do, I've gotten to do all kinds of things. Plays and my head oddities show, which was oh, yeah. everything in my head mm -hmm. that I couldn't do at traditional ballet dance shows. So we had a lot of blood and crazy yes. stuff, brides. And yes, that's whatnot. how we met actually, you yeah. were performing. <laughs> um, what was I going to ask you about that? Uh, do you have a website for the dance troupe? I go through Facebook yep. because I had a website and unfortunately or fortunately Facebook is instantaneous so yes. everybody's on it. I can put videos and get them so you have a separate uh, Facebook page for Holly and the Sacred Flames? No, I don't. Okay. It's just me, Holly Ferreira. <laughs> Holly Ferreira. Now you can be trolled and stalked. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, it's just easier that way because everybody's on it and it's instantaneous, unfortunately. But, you know, as long as you keep people interested. But you performed all things. over the state. Oh, I performed and everywhere. Massachusetts and yes, mm -hmm. I know. Everywhere. And, um... It's just another thing, another art form that if I can show emotion or an idea or something different, I always say if I don't offend or influence somebody in a performance, then I didn't do it right. No, <laughs> so I get you. Art is made to make you think. Yes. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, feel something, it's all good. That's what art is for. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to push push the envelope. Now, 
artwork. You have artwork to show. I do have artwork to show. You want to start in chronological order or whatever way you uh, want to do it? Sure. <clears throat> so this is Klaus Nomi. I know a lot of you probably don't know who he is, but you probably know more about him than me. I saw him when I was young on a concert, Urga Music War, and I fell in love with oh, him. Oh, the movie. Yeah. That movie, he, yeah, that movie changed the world, I think. He was insane and crazy, but I loved him, and he's like an alien and an amazing person, because well, I saw his documentary. They kind of brought him back. I know mm -hmm. that he, uh, if you haven't seen him perform, you mm -hmm. need to look up the mm -hmm. YouTube videos, because mm -hmm. he's completely unique. Um, this, this painting has been in the Portsmouth Arts Guild, and mm -hmm. now it'll be at the in the window here on Broadway in Newport. Yeah, so. you get to see him looking at you as you drive <laughs> by. <laughs> and then here is the skeleton twins, of course. I'm sure you've all seen this image of the two-headed baby. But um, again, I love freak shows, and I always loved all that stuff. And... I find such beauty in that. I know a lot of people don't, but I always loved when the freak shows came to Bristol. The Bristol Fourth of July, their oh, carnival used to have freak shows in oh, it, okay. and I loved it so much. I mean, I was too scared to go into them when <laughs> I was a kid. They were scary, yeah. you know. Um, but I always heard people being scared, but then me was like, "Well, I'm not scared," so. Does that make me weird that I like seeing this? I don't know. But, um. Well, we like to embrace the different. Yeah, yes. I just like. No, I find a, beauty in it. So. No, I'm not sure, but there might be. This might be from one of the specimens in that museum mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, uh. So that's them, and of course I add glitter to everything that I do, yes. pretty much, so. Yes. Even henna, also. <laughs> and... and... This is one of... The, this one, if you can get it up, I can probably help you, is our spiritual mentor. <laughs> yeah. That would be Vampira, who is one of the 1950s mm -hmm. horror hosts. Yes! And I loved her. Vampira, I just love her because she's like the best ghoul around. <laughs> just, I love her and her black dress and her long hair, and I love that she had a mohawk and I've, she's very I've cool. I've seen pictures woman. of her in the, with the mohawk. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. she's some very people cool. may remember her because she had an acting part in the movie, actually a cup, no one movie, Plan Nine Planet from Nine. Outer Space. Yep. And her waist was skinny, uh, tiny, tiny. 18 or 20 inches. Yep. <laughs> and she probably had, what, 35, 36 inch hips. Yeah. Uh, so Gorgeous. There was, there was definitely <laughs> some organ moving around when she yeah. cinched up. So uh, if you like corset play, I guess, you would appreciate that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, she was, I think, originally from Hungary. Her name was Mala Nuri. See, you know way more than me. And she was a friend of Ed Wood, who yes. was the director, mm -hmm. which is how she got involved with yeah. his ensemble of actors, including Tor Johnson, the Swedish angel wrestler, yeah. and Bela Lugosi, yeah. who was um, at the, on the downside of his career. In fact, he died during the shooting of yeah. Plan 9 from Outer Space, yeah. and they had to replace him with a double for some scenes. The movie uh, itself works on many levels. It's sad and really funny at the same time just because it's, uh, let's just say hastily done, so there are yeah. lots of errors that you would find in it. And it was known for years as uh, the worst movie ever mm -hmm. made because it won a Golden Turkey Award in yeah. the 1980s. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I'm sure it's streamable mm -hmm. e everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, check it out. Cult classic. Cult classic. Yeah. So Absolutely. these are all going to go in the window of the annex and we will be augmenting that with 
our community-based Halloween mask donations, which I did years ago with uh, people. We still have artwork, um, artists cr crafted masks from different people um, in town and beyond, and they've been accumulating like sediment, like like the clown collection. Which, I'm which you have a fabulous <laughs> account, clown collection, I'm jealous. So we're... I love, we're, whenever you post that picture, I love that. That's clown. a very special, pro yeah. we'll probably throw him in as a, as a side. Oh, you know, I have a couple of amazing. figures here that have to be kept in the store because, mm -hmm. first of all, my roommate won't allow them <laughs> to be in the house, mm -hmm. and also they tend to creep around at mm -hmm. night. And with that, uh, you'll get to see how we set things up, and you'll see some final results. Thank you so much for having great? me. This is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It was wonderful. Hi, my name is Michael Roach, and I'll be filling in with Wayne. He's my mentor, and I will be interviewing Jason Bamford. He's an incredible friend of mine, and he is a, a great uh, part of Halloween itself because he does many things about it, and you can't believe how he, on his own, well, with help and his own ideas, he makes this wonderful place for people in their own lifetime to enjoy for Halloween. So Jason does a Halloween trail. So I'll ask Jason now, what do you, what was your first year of Halloween but how was it like well for me personally I used to like the first year I did the trail um well it was a new thing to me it was very small like it was just in the back of our um, yard people just came around this little like 10 foot radius circle it was very very small there wasn't a whole lot of props there was only three people involved and it's grown tremendously in the last few years so seeing the progress from my first year to now is just something that I find really special. Um, the because the first year I barely had any help, there was not a whole lot of support, and I'm glad that enough people believed in me to make the trail what it is today. And I know we have Ben uh, Williams over here, uh, another Hello. friend of ours, and he's uh, one of the actors for his trail. So, what's your input about it? About being an actor? Is it fun? Is it I love doing this trail. As soon as I, Jason told me about it, I fell in love with it. And I've been just trying to take on more responsibility to try to help him get this done so we can expand a bit more. So, where's your Halloween trail located? Um, the trail is located at 211 Greenwood Drive. Um, it's where my house is. It's in the backwoods behind there. Um, it's a lot of fun. And, I mean, we just like anyone who can attend, um, can attend. So, um, yeah. What day would you be having the... Um, it yeah. is the um, 26th, 27th, and the... Day of Halloween. Yes. And it's going to be, it's gonna be from um, 6 to 10. There you go. So, I know you work hard, so you got your Halloween folder over there if you want to show it. Um, the yes, right here. This is, our, is my Halloween folder. Um, this is, it's almost falling apart because I've had this since year one. Or maybe it was two. I don't remember. Probably had to replace it a few times. Um, but this I've, is where I contain most of my work. Stuff like my drawing designs, um, my logo design, which I have right here. Um, that's been through um, a lot of different changes. I keep stuff like shopping lists, um, uh, costume designs, um, outlines for the trail. Just basically anything that really I find I need to get done for the trail. This is a nice little place to put it in. Um, and I'm not the best at drawing, but if my ideas are enough to come to my... Um, like, if I'm able to understand my own drawings, um, then um, just having a place for them, they don't really need to be, like, redone or anything. If I understand them enough, then this is just a great place to put them in so I can get my work done efficiently. So the best part about having this trail is it's, uh, it's, it helps your community out. So can you tell us about your community around here? Um, it's been a, like, um... The past few years have been very good. The community has been very accepting of my trail. Um, and very importantly so because the reason I do this is for the community. I always ask for donations every year. Um, and I really don't care whether I get um, money out of this or not. Even though I spend a lot of money doing it. 
my really my um the entire idea behind this trail is basically just to just provide something other than just a common front ha of the house decoration on Halloween to just provide a little something more so that people can enjoy it and if they want to be scared they can be scared and if they don't they just want to come through and look at my decorations that's fine as well so it's been completely non-profit other than donations um, since the beginning and that's something I hold really near and dear and that's what I want to continue doing in the future so this on the other perspective of the person going in his trail it's like it's a very good uh, experience when you're a child and you go into a um, a trail that's scary. I know you get stressed sometimes about your trail. Oh How's yeah, that? It, it's a good stress though. Mainly the stress that um, I get from this trail has been like trying to get everything together and to meet deadlines. I mean, right now today's date is October 9th, so it may not it may seem like Halloween's a little ways away, but if you think about it, there's less than 20 days. So, I mean that till the beginning of my trail. Math is not my strong suit. Point is that um, there's a, lo a little bit of time to get a whole lot done, and we have a lot of area to cover. I have a lot of things to plan, stuff to make, props to fix, and batteries to replace. Battery replacement takes way longer than it should. But point is, that's where most of the stress comes from, but it's a good stress, and what I've learned from it is that that kind of stress you're going to be feeling in your entire life no matter what you do. It's to get stuff done, but that stress will help you achieve your end goal. And I know you want to be a filmmaker and a director and an actor, and this is great experience for those because oh, yeah. you're gonna, you have, you're making a schedule for yourself. And you make, exactly. you have a dedication to it, and you, you, you're doing wonderful things for the community. You know who else helps you around the trail? Um, mostly it's been volunteer actors, but my mom and dad have been um, very helpful. My dad has helped me make props. My mom has been, helped me drive me to places, help set things up. Um, but mainly, again, it's a community-run thing. I mean, if I have to do it myself, I do it myself, but it would not be as big and as um, great as it is right now if it weren't for the um, many and numerous volunteers who come and take time out of their days and nights to help me set up and act for this trail and make it what it is. And so how did the years improve of the trail? Like, I know you upgraded, but, like, in what terms? Um, in terms of um, people who showed up, um, in terms of how big it was, the amount of props, the amount of work and money I put into it, and the amount of volunteers who helped out. That's mainly what's grown in the past. Um, and it's become, like, a much bigger success. Um, if it wasn't for that expansion, I probably would have given up on the trail a long time ago. But the community has helped me really to keep this thing going and I really appreciate that and it's something that I want to continue in the future. Um, that being said, I'm almost 18 now and there's a lot of new rules that come in to um, when you're being 18. You have to hire like police officers, you have to get the area rented out, you have to go to the whole town and tell them what's going on. You have to make sh ensure that your actors have like complete safety restrictions, stuff like that. Um, and I focus on those a lot now, but when it gets to like the nitty gritty legal stuff when you're 18, that stuff comes down really heavy. So I'm thinking about maybe either moving locations or finding um, an adult who does this also in coming years so that I can, you know, work with them and still keep this trail going because it's been a great part of the um, community and I want to continue that. So Jason, what's your favorite part about Halloween? Um, for me, Halloween, I, it's hard to say anything else but the Halloween trail, but that's really what my favorite part about Halloween is, is, like, everyone coming together, um, to help me with my project. I mean, that's been my favorite part of Halloween, and to see all the people who come through my Halloween trail, um, and just be amazed at what I have been able to accomplish, and that's my favorite part about Halloween. Uh, that's great. I mean, for me, is uh, I like the horror movies and the candy. Real candy. I got Yeah, exactly. And Ben, what's your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part is getting to see the fear on people's face when I get to scare them. It's really fun to. It's it's worth the money. Yeah, it's worth the money to get to get be able to scare someone, and it's really cool to get to do it and with Jason. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Uh, so you got some props over here you want to show um, to us? Yes, from first year, back when the show was a little bit. A fake chainsaw that has been through a lot 
So right now I just keep it as an artifact or as a backup when the gas chain it's doesn't mess up, which they missing. always do. It's missing the, the chain. It the chain has broke off. It was actually the second thing to go. Surprisingly, the work it still works and it still does what it needs to do, and it can work in a pinch. But the first thing that came off was the handle, which was a metal handle, but it was attached to a piece of plastic, and of course the plastic broke off. And then the um, blade part, which is fake blade made out of rubber, started to deteriorate, and that went. Um, this wheel also becomes loose much more often now, um, and some of the screws starting to get loose. It's it's old plastic. It's lasted me five years though. But um, I remember first year I used to um, just pull this back, even though it was nothing, and just like to make that type of sound, and then just this button makes a standard effect for a chainsaw. But I used to pull it back and do. And make it sort of like st sound like it wasn't starting, and then I pull it, push the button down, and it would do its thing. Kind of like the chainsaw massacre. Yes, that was a good movie. Pretty much, because that has no gore in it. Not leave it or not. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. And here's um, but, all right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here's the second prop that we had. This has been with us for a while. It's this actually... became part of our logo the first year. Um, I've actually got this the second year, but I had one similar to it the first year. Um, batteries are almost dead on it. See, right there. But, a nice lantern. this was part of my original costume. Um, there could be a picture right there. Thank you. Um, and that was my original Victor costume the first year, where I had, um, this in one hand, and I was sort of leading people through the entrance and out the exit. Um... But since I'm usually short on um, actors a lot of time, because, um, again, it's volunteer work, so people can't commit 100%, which is understandable, and I appreciate them helping out anyway, um, I have to fulfill more than one role. So half the time I'd be with this in the entrance and then run to somewhere else to do a different role. Um, so, yeah, this has been pretty much since the beginning, and I'm hoping to continue it till the end. And a funny story that I was in Jason's Halloween show, I think yes. last year, and I had the, this time we had a real chainsaw, so that the belt was changed. Yeah, of course, and because yeah. safety reasons. File photo here. Yes. <laughs> and we had uh, mis mishaps to say. Uh, um, mistakes. yeah. Although when you sound like that, it sounds like issues. It was, it, it, issues. It wasn't, a word. It, the chainsaw just didn't work a whole lot. And the reason was because we were using not the right amount of um, gasoline yes. mixture, um, so it wouldn't cycle correctly, and it would stall constantly. So we resorted to using this and eventually breaking it. Funny story that we had a group of kids coming up to my part of the section of the trail, and I'm getting ready for that chainsaw to rumble and to scare the living hell out of them. And guess what? The thing just dies! Oof. After we got the whole thing fixed by Jason's neighbor, uh, yeah, yeah. and it was the most funniest and most uh, stressful thing. I had a me. nice view of that. Yes, you did. I got to watch him just try to endlessly yank it. I was like, oh my god! Yeah, that's where improvising comes Real in life. a lot for our trail, though. And that's again why we have a, a backup and B. Um, you basically just can do if if stuff happens, then you just stuff work happens. with it. Um, Jason and Ben invent uh, quite of uh, unique uh, toys to say devices <laughs> devices and for a Halloween trail. They're not meant to hurt people. Exactly, but they're like, meant to scare people. For safety reasons, um, this has been a circular saw that my dad nicely have let me use, and I made a few modifications so that it's not going to actually hurt anybody. Say we have like a fake, um, like, we have an actor, and we need to, like, quote-unquote, cut their arm off or give the illusion of that. What I made here is a, um, paper, um, disc, which is supposed to replicate the saw blade, um, and this is very flimsy, like, it's very flimsy paper, um, and to avoid, like, um, paper cuts, because, believe it or not, paper is actually more strong and more powerful than you'd think when putting a, um, yeah. saw. We're going to wet the paper so that way it's going to break off if it hits anything. And it's not supposed to hit anything, so that'll work. Um, I also made a catch here since the safety thing is really annoying and it kind of doesn't make it look as scary. I add some string right here so that I can hold the catch back and sort of like reveal the blade to people and then run it. And then 
just to, like do my do um the work of cutting whatever it needs to be cut. Again, it, it's all fake, but it looks real, and that's what the point is. This hasn't been painted yet. I have another saw blade that's being painted, um, but um, it looks fine even now. But even with a silver spray paint, it's gonna look even better. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna look better because people don't see as Special much in the dark. Special effects, exactly. So. This is the end of the interview, and I like to thank Jason for being a part yeah, of the thank Halloween you so special. Because Ben and thank Jason you, ben. are not like you know, not to be rude, they're not you know they don't draw a lot, they don't paint a lot, so they're the first ones to be on this yeah. art matters. With one I, I'm not really good at it, but there are different types of art, and this is an art form that I really appreciate That's is being able to say. set stuff up. Yeah, because he did a wonderful job. All right. So right now we're gonna go disappear. So let's get ready. Uh, yeah. uh, Mike disappears.